Yo, what up everyone? There's a lot to learn from the past two days. I want to break down a few different trades that I took along with some trades that we took in my Discord community with some market context, basically dissecting this market inside and out to go over what I saw, how I saw it, and why I saw it to actually put a trade on. I'm also going to get into the psychology aspect to the market and the trades that I took. But before we get into it, I'm going to link my Instagram in the description below for those who have not followed it yet at Investitrade. On here, I post daily trading recaps along with very good trading tips and tricks that I guarantee you you're not going to find anywhere else. You're seriously missing out if you're not following it. Link is in the description below. But now, let's get right into this recap. It's going to be a good one. First trade I took was on NASDAQ. Now, this is one I really didn't plan out for, but I saw some clues intraday that my risk and my reward was defined. And I put the trade on, not knowing it was gonna work out, but I knew the odds were kind of in my favor. So the first thing I wanna get into is the pre-market plan. I post these every single day in the Discord, the setups I'm watching, levels I'm looking out for, and potential trade setups and scenarios. So today on the NASDAQ, we had very bearish action because yesterday we rejected supply with heavy selling pressure and we didn't have any buyers present yesterday. And without those buyers present, we created a bunch of supply, especially one at 16098 and 16161, uh, which I cannot be too bullish on rallies below it. So looking at a higher time frame, this was yesterday's action on Monday, December 13th. Double top at supply, sold off. We had a few demand zones in the way. We absolutely sliced through them, indicating heavy selling pressure and very weak buying. So now the market overnight was opening up. We had new supply which formed and I could not be too bullish below these levels even if we did rally. If I am looking to be bullish, I will say this goes for any scenario. I want you all to rate your setups, ones that have a higher probability of working out, ones that have a lower probability of working out. The ones that have a lower probability of working out trade with smaller size and look to get in and out pretty fast because you can capitalize on quick moves even though it's lower probability, you must be able to look to take your profits fast and get in with smaller size just to protect yourself. So I said, there's not much supporting this market. I'm going to be looking for clues to possibly get short. If the market opens up weak, targeting this one, five, eight, six, five demand zone, which is actually this level right here. If we find no buyers at this demand, I'm going to be looking for an area to play puts targeting the demand zone lower. So this was posted about an hour before the market opened up and we still looked like this. Now we didn't really hit demand yet and I wish this scenario could have happened at the open so we could have capitalized on a quick move to the downside. However, you have to put yourself in the position of other market participants. I say this all of the time. If you are looking to sell, put yourself in a position of other buyers. If you're looking to buy something, put yourself in the position of other sellers. That in itself gives you a good advantage over the competition. So before the market opened up, we had a sell off right into this demand zone. So my mentality for this was we're possibly going to have shorts covering in the market. Now, when if you're a short, if you're a seller in the market, you're technically a buyer for you to close out your position. You have to buy to cover. And if there is new, new buying with shorts covering, that is going to fuel a further move to the upside. So when I saw us opening up inside of demand, I was kind of figuring out if I was a seller and the market did rally, I probably would have covered my position and fueled the, a further move to the upside. So what I saw here was in the first minute, uh, I was watching the time and sales. As you could tell, I have a nice grid up here. I set my filter to above five on the NASDAQ future. And at the first minute, two minutes, I saw some nice buying orders, heavy ones coming through. And now with that context, I kind of try to put myself in the position of those buyers, see where else I would buy, see where else I would take profit and where I kind of would be hurting if the market did start moving, you know, against me and against my analysis. So I got long at 939. I wanted to get a quick pullback. My stop for this trade was below this little red candle low and my entry was at this pullback. I think I got the QQQ 389 calls or 390 calls. I posted my uh, fills in the discord if you want to go back and see it. But I got long on this pullback, stop was right here, and I was risking or I was targeting VWAP and potentially a break above VWAP. So I had the mentality that 
We had buyers in the market. This is going to be a quick move. I got in fast. And if we get a quick push up, my contracts go up 20, 30 cents. I'm just going to get out because it's something that has a higher probability of working out. Now, this is something that's very difficult to understand uh, prior to this. I didn't plan this. This is just me reacting to what the market's giving me. You can only develop this skill through screen time and experience and understanding what to look out for and what to see. So now that I have my risk set, my target defined, I let the trade work out. The next two minutes, we rallied up. And at 9.41, I sold 90% of my position at $3.40 right at this area right here. Anticipating that we were going to break up to the upside. Now, at this point in the intraday commentary tab, this is where I update my thought process throughout the day in the Discord. I said this 1600 or 16,000 mark to 1620 area is going to be very important in the next 45 minutes. If we fail to move out of here and start moving lower into demand, I'll be open to playing puts. If we break out of this 16,000 mark with strong volume and continuation, I'm going to look at this as not a weak rally and buyers may have us uh, may have some strength to target the supply above. Now here's the picture. Uh, this was my area like this. And the question is, is it a failed rally or is it a strong rally? That's to be determined with price action in the future. This is where you have to react to the market. No one knows what's going to happen next. You just have to use the clues that it gives you to come up with a plan. The more development equals more information, equals more context, equals easier to read, and it's easier to take trades. Now, at this point, when we started moving uh, higher, I actually got out at 942. Uh, when it looked like this, when it looked like we were selling from VWAP, I knew playing today's expiration or um, yes, tomorrow's expiration that if we pulled back, I probably would have been not in a good spot. So I just wanted to protect myself. I said in the pre-market plan, I really didn't want to get long and I knew this wasn't going to last if we rejected the 16,000 to 1620 zone. Now where this came from was the drop, which is why this wasn't in the pre-market plan was it came from this area right here act like this is a pink supply zone, which formed when the market sold off prior to the open. So we hit that perfectly. With that context, you may have looked to take the market short. However, I wanted a little more information because if we did get above this area, we would have rallied inside of the supply zone. I didn't know if buyers were going to you know, leverage into more position to take us higher or if sellers were gonna fail. So with that context, when I feel 50-50, I kind of said this to members today. Um, let me see if I can find it. I said, when I feel bullish or bearish and I'm 50-50, it kind of means to sit sidelined. I said, before I take any trade, I always ask myself, if I'm looking to long here, does it make sense if I'm a bear? Or if I'm looking to short here, does it make sense to be a bull? And if I answer yes to those questions, I never, ever take the trade. I take trades when probabilities are in my favor. When the market's like this, yes, we reject the supply, but I still was waiting for new demand to possibly form, indicating another rally to the upside. I didn't know we were going to sell off to the downside. Yes, you could argue you could put risk on the table, maybe stop above the high. Some members did and had a very nice put position from this supply zone to each his own. But with this context and selling off and this rally being weak like this, I was more inclined to playing puts to the downside. If you go back to what I said earlier was if we fail to move out of here and start moving lower, back into demand, and if we find no, no buyers at demand, I'm going to be open to playing puts. Now this action, why I was inclined for this was because of yesterday, we had very, very similar action. We had demand in this area. We had demand in this area. And every single time we came into demand, it was met from aggressive selling and very weak buying, which is a bad sign to be a bull and a good sign to be a uh, bear. So with this context, the same information from yesterday, I was looking to play the market short. Now, at this time, you know, the commentary was very, very good in the Discord today. And I'll just post, uh, show you guys a little bit of it, but it was um, right here. It said, do not see any reason to get short inside of this demand just yet. If you are shorting down here at the lows, where is your risk? We already are extended to the downside. It wouldn't make sense to enter on a strong move down with any base or consolidation. If we're short in the red area, it would have been a good area to take some profits off the table. Meaning, 
I'm just going to remove this pink box. Keep, keep in mind that it, it is there and we do have supply. Now, let's say I'm looking to short right here, right? I'm short right here at the lows as soon as we come into demand. One, we're inside of demand. Yes, we had a plan to play it if we broke. But two, this not might not have been a bad entry because yesterday we saw it slice through it. But if I did get short here, where would my stop loss be? Where on the chart am I going to be wrong based off of my analysis? It would probably have to be in this area up here. And from a risk to reward standpoint and a probability standpoint, this just does not make any sense whatsoever for me to get short down here and take profits up here. So I need to see more development, more information, and something to really jump out at me. In fact, the, the smart members actually took this long when we started moving up. And this could have been a nice call trade, but uh, I know some people took this. So we failed right at this high. Yeah, you know, if your stop was there, you know, you still would have been in this trade. But it really did not interest me until we got to the 1047 mark when I saw this little consolidation right here at the low. Think about it. Every time we come into demand, we bounce. Now, when we come into this level, after a failed rally indicating weak buyers, we come back into this demand, consolidate at it, and start seeing some heavy selling pressure come through. As soon as I see that, I look to take the market short. Now, this is kind of going against what I just said, but it's higher probability of it working out. Because of this failed rally, technically my stop would have to be at these highs. But because this rally failed right here, I'm more inclined that if we do start selling off, my stop loss was above this candle high right here just because of this failed reaction from buyers, indicating buyers are very weak. So 947, I'm short. And at 9.53, I take 85% of my position off the table, just like I did earlier, just to protect myself. I didn't want to get caught in a fake out, especially that uh, the conditions that we currently are seeing. Keep in mind, tomorrow, very, very big day. We got the FOMC. We got the Fed speaking. Thursday, we got jobs. So everything I'm going over right now is going to be very crucial for tomorrow and Thursday. So... I'm prepared. I know members are prepared. If you aren't prepared and you aren't trading differently to these conditions, you are going to get screwed and your account is going to deplete because you are going to take trades that are avoidable. Now I'm out 85% of my position. The market starts just hovering over here. Uh, we start consolidating and I tried getting out my full position on another quick move at 1056 like this. I got filled literally one contract out of my remaining 15% at the lows right here. So now I'm still in this trade. I have zero reason to panic. Zero reason to panic because we're consolidating near the lows. We're about 40 points away from demand. Um, let's see right here. I said if we test this 1586 area and buyers don't show up, I think differently. I'm going to be more inclined to playing puts. That was after I just explained if I was to get short at that green circle. Uh, I said 15823 should act as support. This is why patience is key. I said, do we think we could trigger the demand lower at 15731? Absolutely. But do I think we have a straight shot down there? No, I don't think that's very realistic. And if you stuck with the analysis, you stuck with your plan, you could have had a nice move right into demand or we bounced perfectly. I sold my remaining contracts when we broke this flag just to protect myself. Yes, I could have got another 40 points out of the market, but I will never complain about the profits I made on this trade. Stress-free, risk-free, very, very simple analysis, just using price and volume. There's no gimmick. Understanding market context and understanding the relationship to price and volume. So I got out there, you know, I could have squeezed probably another 50 to 70 cents off the contracts. Volume started dying out and bounced perfectly off of this demand zone. I know some members actually took it long when we got above this level right here, targeting VWAP. Uh, I know some members made really good money off of that trade specifically, but just goes to show you, you know, with context, you don't always have to get short at supply. You don't have to get long at demand. These are just areas that I'm interested in trading at. These are my areas of interest, and I use price and volume to tell me when. So my supply and demand zones are my where, and price and volume tells me when. No secret formula. Just learn how to read context. Leave your emotions out of it, understand market participants, and gauge price and volume. It's a serious edge, and it could compound you a lot of money, and it's a very good skill to acquire. 
The S&P 500, SPY had very similar context. Just to get some more, let's go over the pre-market plan. I said I could not be bullish below the 4665 and three quarter supply zone. Now why this was key and why I wasn't bullish above it was yesterday, just like NQ, we sold off from supply, we had demand lower, and the action yesterday uh, was very strange. It was lower volume, lower volatility, but higher volume that we just sliced through demand. And we came into the 4665 demand zone, ignore this pink box. This was once demand flipped, you know, just like this, that we bounced at perfectly. Now overnight, I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but now 4665 was supply. So this was a very important level that I could not be bullish if we were below it and even if we did rally. Now, just like the NQ scenario, maybe you could scalp counter trend, take your profits fast, and that would have worked out for you. But I could not be bullish for a trend below this supply zone. If it got above it, it would have, little, would have been a little differently. However, below the 4665, I'm going to be focused on playing the market short as there is not much supporting the market. I need to find intraday clues to play puts with proper risk to reward. I'm going to target the 4619 demand, but most importantly, the 4599 and 4586. So just like NQ, you can see, you know, I'm recording this video 20 or 30 minutes before the market closes, I'm recording it at 3.30. And we have almost 2 million lots traded today compared to a daily average of 1.5 million. So the market opens up. VWAP acts as resistance two different times. With the same context, you could have looked to get the market short anywhere in this area. You know, it's kind of hard to say after the fact without looking at the chart. And I don't want to talk in hindsight right here. But I know some members took a short at VWAP. And we sliced through the 4619 area. Found some buyers. Inverse head and shoulders pattern at this demand. And we had a nice end of day rally. So it's all about marking your levels of interest. That's your where. And using price and, the, and volume to develop your why and develop your when to actually enter the market. You put your risk on the table. You accept your risk and you put the trade on. It should be stress-free. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't work out, it's already predetermined what's going to happen if it doesn't move in your favor. I will say, if you... Feel like you're trading with a lot of emotions size down trade one contract trade two contracts trade three contracts a lot of people try to swing from a home run they try to go from zero to 100 when they're first learning or when they're new and they blow up they destroy their accounts they take large losses and subconsciously psychologically it affects their next trade without them even knowing it so i recommend seriously sizing down I sized down today and made very, very good profits for the amount of stress and the amount of risk that I put on the table. You, With these volatile markets, you don't need large size. In fact, if you trade large size, I guarantee you're going to lose it more than you make it. And when you trade smaller size, you're still going to get very good gains like I got today. You know, it's, it's not science. It's a big mental game. Control your emotions. Understand the market auction. Understand how the market works. Have an edge and trade your edge. Do that, and I guarantee you'll start seeing some consistency. So on that note, I'm going to end it. I would appreciate it if you could just drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and if you truly want to learn more and you want to join the Discord, check out the links in the description below. I offer a very in-depth and educational course that will come with access to the Discord at no extra cost. I do plan on raising the prices before end of the year, and I will be adding a full tape reading section to the A to Z. But on that note, I'm ending it. Peace out.